Good morning. <clears throat> if my voice cracks here and there, I got a touch of cold, please bear with me. I just hope that I can live up to uh, Bruce's expectation. Uh, I'm honored to be here this morning representing my hometown, Seoul, city of culture, design, and great eats. I bring special greetings from Mayor Oh Se-hun of Seoul and the Minister of Culture, Sports, and Tourism, Jung Byung-guk. My honor and pleasure double because this year we're celebrating Australia-Korea Friendship Year to mark the 50th anniversary of the dip uh, establishment of diplomatic relations between our two countries. The subject I picked for my talk this morning is isolation and collaboration, the two factors which have shaped the very existence of modern Korea. Throughout history, our strategic location between Japan and China made us an easy and frequent target for invasions. We read 19th century Korea withdrew, sort of fortress Korea, if you will. Protect a nation, she willfully walled herself from the outside world and earning the moniker Hermit Kingdom. Totally isolated, the country floundered. Fast forward to 1950 for proof positive that Korea finally understood collaboration. In our critical hour of need, 16 countries of the United Nations came to fight with us during the Korean War. Australian fighter jets were among the very first to arrive. And I take this occasion to thank and salute you all for the sacrifice paid by some of Australia's finest during the three-year conflict. Badly battered, South Korea emerged from the battle challenged, yet with a newfound spirit of determination. The power and potential of collaboration with international players forever changed us and put us on the path to success. Seoul's story in tourism and business events follows a similar line. Our industry's turning point came in 1988 with Seoul's hosting of the Summer Olympics which proved to be a real eye-opener eye for many. Not only did the world finally get a glimpse of a relatively unknown country, we Koreans came to see that the world had an interest in Korea. So it began. That same year, Seoul's premier exhibition center began a re renaissance with the addition of meetings facilities. The venue's rebranding itself speaks volumes of our progress, from the original COEX with K, a place to host Korea exhibitions, to COEX, Convention and Exhibition Center, to signify the increasingly important role of conventions. <clears throat> Since then, COEX expanded again and again, adding a new Convention and Exhibition Center, ASEM Tower, COEX Mall, and the COEX Intercontinental Hotel. Its crowning success came last year when it played host to the mother of all prestigious meetings, the G20 summit. Yet all the while, the Korean capital of Seoul had no official tourism representation, a fact that did not go unnoticed by an ambitious young mayor, Oh Se-hoon. In his inaugural address in 2006, he declared he would focus on transforming Seoul into a design capital with an aim to be on par with the world's top design cities. New York, London, Milan, Sydney. He realized that to boost Seoul's value, he needed to transform the city. His design vision would do just that, create a city with a new perception, one that could be marketed as an attractive city, a prime destination for both tourism and business events. Soon after, based on two of Mayor O's central themes, combining culture and tourism, Seoul Tourism Organization Convention Bureau itself was established as a cornerstone of the mayor's master plan. We opened our doors in February 2008 as a public-private cooperative venture between the city's, city government and private corporations such as the Korean Air, 
ASEAN Air, major hotels, and resort developers. A true collaboration on all fronts as we worked in tandem. Mayor O oh set out to improve the appeal of the city. STO embarked on the task of marketing Seoul. I came to STO as the inaugural CEO. My directive was simple, sell Seoul, a city that was a relative to newcomer to convention marketing. While I came to this industry rather late, after decades in other fields, from my early career as an international journalist and later as a UN official in New York, Europe, and Asia before finally returning to Korea to head up Korea's English language television, Arirang, and to serve as government ambassador for cultural cooperation. Opening the door was the easy part. My challenge was how I could prove ourselves deserving of taxpayer funds so as to produce results for a city government. Results by, that by definition had to be tangible and long-term. Results that had to build a strong foundation. Results that would not only make up for lost time, but take Seoul further with benefits that extend beyond the initial tourism revenues. Our progress was initially spurred on when in January 2009, both the national and city government specifically tapped the tourism industry as a powerful growth engine capable of revitalizing and expanding the national economy. Within the industry, special emphasis was placed on meetings, incentives, convention, and exhibition, MICE, as one with the greatest growth potential. Soon, a top-level government panel was appointed, headed by the prime minister himself to support the sector. And this happens to be one sector enjoying bipartisan or superpartisan political support. Of the six sectors all designated to lead in the future, three were key to our mission. Tourism, convention services, and design. But to achieve the goals we have set for ourselves, we needed a clear vision and seamless teamwork. However, in a country where everybody works so hard to be number one, it was no easy task to drill the value of a win-win formula produced by teamwork and that it often is a much better game plan for success. So on the foundation of collaboration, I decided to focus on three areas. Domestic, centered on our Seoul Mice Alliance. Two, industry at large, key to the Convention 2020 study. And three, international, with a future Convention Cities Initiative as anchor, which Roy Talwar already has dwelt on. First, a quick look at our domestic collaboration, the Seoul Mice Alliance, so vital to the successful development of the mice industry. It is made up of 72 members representing seven industry sectors, convention centers, hotels, unique venues, PCOs, transportation, travel, and production agencies. In the spirit of partnership, our goal is to raise the standards of conventions and exhibitions in Seoul to the highest competitive global standards. Next, I grapple with an issue that STO had agonized over from the beginning, Seoul's reputation as a mice destination, how to improve it and have that reflected in the global rankings. Seoul has ambitions to be a top five global convention city from our current number nine, that is according to U, that's a UIA rankings. We unfortunately slipped to 13 and congratulations to Sydney for getting up there. To achieve that goal, we must demonstrate a clear long-term vision, one that will continue to be both innovative and competitive to ensure we can deliver quality events often booked up 10 years in advance. I found direction when industry leaders at ICA and IMAX announced the commissioning of Convention 2020 with Rohit Talwa as the principal architect, an in-depth strategic study of the challenges and opportunities of conventions and business tourism. From the initial announcement, we recognized the importance of this global study
which we saw as a tool to assist us in preparing for the decade ahead. The initial findings of the <clears throat> study were encouraging. The study demolished dire predictions that virtual meetings would lead to the demise of the industry as we know it now. Especially good news in these economic hard times was a forecast that demand will continue to increase. By the same token, we also recognize that what will increase is not only demand, but competition. We realize, too, that while we only book conventions in the past, our task has, much become, has become much more complex. For STO, the research drove home the simple message that we must recognize our role has changed fundamentally. When bringing important events to our city, we must make sure that the event has added value for the participants, the city, and its residents. And to, the, to get to the next level of convention marketing and management, we needed to learn from other cities like Sydney and strengthen our partnerships with them. To answer to that question for us was the formation of FCCI, the Future Convention Cities Initiative, and with it, our quest for international collaboration began in earnest. I'm going to skip my discussion of FCCI because uh, Rohit Talwar has already given a healthy dose of this, uh, the purpose and all. Today, FCCI is made up of a wonderful cross-section of major players in the world convention industry. Sydney, London, San Francisco, Abu Dhabi, Toronto, Durban, and Seoul. And the first rotating chair is none other than Lynn Lewis Smith. As STO enters our fourth year representing Seoul, I can say that officials have a sharply increased awareness of the economic potential and the prestige in attracting major meetings and events. They now also recognize that the people-to-people -people exchanges these international conventions and exhibitions bring about are essential in transforming Seoul into a truly global city in every sense of the word. We continue to stress that the immediate financial return on investment in holding a convention is just the tip of the iceberg. Case in point. This summer, Seoul will welcome IDA International Dragon Award. We expect about 5,000 Chinese and overseas Chinese participants. We all know the immediate bottom line is a substantial further gathering this large. But beyond the money factor, how do you determine the value of 5,000 business visitors to your city? What side deals will be made when 250 of them are CEOs of major regional companies. Will they bring their employees on future incentive travel? Set up a career office? I know my time is not quite up, is it? Um, I'm going to conclude and say my parting message two weeks ago to my staff at the Seoul Tourism Organization and Convention Bureau was to continue to think and act collaboration. It is a science, as Charles Darwin surmised, it is a long history of humankind. Those who learn to collaborate and improvise most effectively have prevailed. I couldn't agree more. I think I was been too vigilant in cutting down my text to stay within 15 minutes, and I'm, I think I've done pretty well here. Thank you very much.